Genre, Biography, Judy's Appalachia. A mountaintop is leveled to mine for coal in Appalachia. Judy Bond's six-year-old grandson stood in a creek in West Virginia. He held up a handful of dead fish and asked, What's wrong with these fish? All around him, dead fish floated belly up in the water. That day became a turning point for Judy Bonds. She decided to fight back against the coal mining companies that were poisoning her home. Marfork, West Virginia The daughter of a coal miner, Julia Judy Bonds, was born in Marfork, West Virginia in 1952. The people of Marfork had been coal miners for generations because coal mining provided people with jobs. Coal gave people the energy they needed to light and warm their homes. But Marfork wasn't just a place where coal miners lived. Marfork was home to a leafy green valley, or holler, surrounded by the Appalachian Mountains on every side. Judy's family had lived in Marfork for generations. Judy grew up there swimming and fishing in the river. She raised a daughter there. Mountaintop Removal Mining An energy company came to Marfork in the 1990s. It began a process called Mountaintop Removal Mining. Using dynamite, the company blew off the tops of mountains to get at the large amounts of coal underneath. The process was quicker than the old method of digging for coal underground, but it caused many problems. Whole forests were destroyed. Judy Bonds spoke out against mountaintop removal mining. Dust from the explosions filled the air and settled over the towns. Coal sludge, a mixture of mud, chemicals, and coal dust, got into the creeks and rivers. Pollution from the mountaintop removal mining began making people living in the towns below the mountains sick. In the area where Judy lived, coal sludge flowed into the rivers and streams. People packed up and left. Judy was heartbroken. The land she loved was being mistreated. She realized that the valley that had always been her home had been poisoned. No longer a safe place to live, it had become dangerous. Judy, her daughter, and her grandson had to leave. Working for Change Something had to be done about the pollution. Judy decided it was important to protest against strip mining and demand that it be stopped. She felt that she must try to keep the area safe for people. She felt qualified to talk to groups about the injustice of whole towns being forced to move and mountains and forests being destroyed, all because of strip mining. After all, she had grown up in a mining family. Timeline. 1952. Judy is born in West Virginia. 2001. Judy's family is forced to leave Marfork Hollow. 2003. Judy is awarded the $150,000 Goldman Environmental Prize. 2011. Judy dies at age 59. Judy worked as a volunteer for the Coal River Mountain Watch, a group that fought against mountaintop removal mining. Eventually, she became its executive director. She registered to take part in protests against mining companies. At the protests, Judy faced a lot of anger and insults. Many coal miners were not opposed to mountaintop removal mining. They supported it because they needed the jobs to provide for their families. Judy knew it would be impossible to boycott the mining companies. The coal miners could not afford to leave their jobs. Instead, she pushed for changes to be made to the mining process. Slowly, small changes were made to protect communities in mining areas. In 2003, Judy was awarded the Goldman Environmental Prize for her efforts as an activist. Remembering Judy Sadly, Judy could not fulfill all of her goals. She was diagnosed with cancer and died in January 2011. But her success has provided encouragement to other activists. Judy may not have been able to stay in her home,
but her work will help preserve and protect the Appalachian Mountains and help others remain in their homes. Judy Bonds spoke at protests. The Monongahela National Forest in West Virginia.